Today I'm gonna to pretend it is a half an hour before a load in and my band template file just got corrupted. And now I've gotta build it from scratch, step by step. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do on an X32 or M32 file type in M32 edit. I'm gonna give us a typical four piece band setup and I'm gonna go through step by step and build it from scratch. Um, if, if you think you're gonna like this console template to reference, I'm gonna have it at the link below in my audio toolkit, so make sure and grab that. But uh, I'm gonna give you some very specific things I've learned over the years to make it more intuitive or access things better, the effects I like to use, both insert and time-based, why I lay out things in a certain way, how I set up my matrices to be ready for any PA. Anyway, things can be a lot of fun. I'll be stepping through in the software, showing you exactly what I do when I prepare for any band in, on an X32 console. Let's jump right in. Here we are in M32 edit. I usually work faster here in the software than on the console and it's easier to teach from, so that's why we're using that. But it's completely blank, initialize, and we're gonna pretend we got a four piece band coming in, bass, guitar, drums, and a few vocalists and get this up to speed. A lot of this can be transferred to other consoles, but I've just used this console a ton and I did this this past weekend for a great band, so I had this on my brain. So here we are, let's jump in. I always start with outputs first. So buses and matrices. Let's pretend they're all running floor wedges. So we got four mono mixes. Smutter one, mod two, mod three, mod four. And I like to color code them the same as the instrument group. So we got drums, bass, a guitarist, and a vocalist. Let's just keep it simple. So red for me is drums, bass is yellow, Guitar is green and vocalists are that blue for me. And I'll go ahead and put them at Unity and we'll see if we need to change that later. So that's outputs, monitors, those are there. Now, and we'll have the rest of these buses just in case there's another act or someone brings in ears, I can have that separately and pipe it out there. I would usually go through and make these all white so they are different from my other ones and they kind of lets me know they're unused. They're white here. And now we move on to effects. So get those buses sent. I use all four of these. I start with a hall, a plate verb, a short delay, and a long delay. And the short delay is more like a slap back and the long delay um, can be used rhythmically or as a wash or whatever. So this, for whatever reason, did not clear out <laughs> some other stuff I had going. So I'll zero that out. I'll usually run my PA left and PA right matrices. This is a stereo matrix. Uh, have that ready to go for a rig. I can always separate these out if I feel like there's no overlap between the speakers if I want to do that. But anyway, that's PA left, PA right matrix. Let's uh, have a front fill matrix ready to go and then have a sub matrix ready to go. Put those all at unity for now. Put these down, put these down and we'll just label, label them matrix five. Matrix six, and I like to have my matrices white here, and these will be here ready to go. Just need a press feed, or if there's a delay feed, or whatever. Let's say I know nothing about the venue, that's a four piece band. I'm gonna just show up, make it happen. This is how I would do it. And I'm assuming, or just in case you haven't seen my other videos on why I prefer a sub matrix versus an aux, just Google that, or I can have a little card here if YouTube will work for me, and you can check that out. But we send my left right mix to these at Unity. Uh, we're actually at negative six. So if I go back to the user layer, I have my left right, which is right here. And I'm going to send it to stereo destinations at Unity and then mono destinations at negative six because two things that are correlated, perfectly correlated coming together will sum and I would keep my game structure equal so to the front fill and sub matrix, they are at negative six and it's stereo is to left and right. And those are being set there. So now I have one master fader for the entire system. If I need to adjust volume, I have one place where I apply master EQ to the whole rig if I need it. And then I move to these specific zones if I need to apply it. Let's say my speakers didn't have high pass filter process or active processing built in. I can apply high pass filter to make them play nice with my subs right here versus my front fills. So those uh, shouldn't have that processing on there. Anyway, for front fills, make that happen. And again, I'm not usually not applying high pass or low pass on subs if they're active because that already has it built in. Again, just depends on the rig that I'm dealt, but this is where I'd apply EQ um, 
for any of the zo speaker zones as I need it. And this is the whole mix if I wanted to make changes there. So those are my outputs and routing. I go here to my outs. I start with all of these off, every single one. And then I then move to my outputs and start going, hey, matrix one, two, three, four. So left, right, fill, sub. And then I then move to my next bank of eight. And that's where I start putting in my mix buses. So for monitors, and that would be nine, 10, 11, 12. So first eight reserved for the PA and then the last eight for monitors as I need them is usually how I group it. Depending on the IO available, the stage boxes, local stuff, the specifics of the show, I might change that, but that's where I start. So those are all ready to go. And the tap points are all post fader. So I can have everything going and then I can apply any delays or outputs or whatever to there. An important note about the x 2 the aux outputs don't have any of the delay processing on them. And you can't, uh, so all that being said, uh, I wouldn't use aux outs for the PA just in case you need to add delay. You can use that on mix buses because you almost never add delay to someone's monitor mix. I've never had to do that. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's there on outputs. So outputs are there. I even if I get to the show, I would patch outputs first too because then I need to get something to the PA, walk in music, and then it's more forgiving to be able to be patching the band as they're walking up and still have walking music going, then not have anything through the house at all. Like the, all the mic stands are set up, but nobody could get anything through the PA. So that's where I always start is outputs first. Let's get to some other random inputs and we'll start talking about the band and the processing. So the aux ends, aux one and two, always reserved for, uh, you know, an iPod cable or just a TR dual TS to mono quarter, uh, eighth inch TS cable. I link these and just label it tunes left, tunes right. If I'm gonna get fancy, I'll, I'll convert it to the USB card input and hook that to my computer. But I found on the M32 specifically, that can get a little uh, not reliable, I'll put it that way. So I just go analog to keep it simple. So that'd be tunes left, tunes right. And that's what's happening there. If I had a DJ or somebody else who just wanted to use a different iPod and plug in there, that's ready in aux 3.4. And these are all, uh, I think they're balanced quarter inch inputs. So that's where it lives there. And I would label my effects returns. That's gonna be hall left, hall right, plate left, plate right, S delay left, S delay right, L delay left, L delay right. So those are all labeled now. Got my effects returns. Those buses that send there, I can get walking music. And then I would make sure and have on the very last channel, if I didn't need all of them, 31, 32, have MC1 and MC2. So those are MC microphones. So I'm introducing an act, just a 50, and a 58, just kind of coiled there, ready to go for people and processing for most handheld microphones, high pass at 160, and usually doing some sort of mid-range cut at 500, whoops, that's a boost, my six. And I don't know how to do the copy and paste feature quickly on M32 edit, so I apologize. I, I guess Unity, Utility, anyway, sorry. But that's there. Maybe widen this out a little bit. Just a good start to those microphones. Okay, now let's start moving to the band and transition to those insert effects and then the time-based effects. So, kick, snare, uh, tom one, tom two, overhead and hat. So just keeping it really nice and nice and simple make all these red now just want to minimize channel count just in case there's another band that shows up i don't have a rider just keeping it simple so i can get this up quickly if there's a third tom or i can add a bottom snare mic or maybe do stereo overheads sure but just for demonstration purposes y'all can figure that out <laughs> if you want to add that i'm just showing you basic setup here then i would have yellow is bass but if I don't know what drums are gonna look like, I would probably leave some space here so I could put them there. 
And so I, if I'm on the X32, I'm most likely going to be in the iPad running around. And so it's easy to get to my first eight. I know as drums, then the second eight I would have as bass and then other instruments. And then the eight after that might be vocals and such. So I have bass is right here. I'll leave another space just in case acoustic guitar pops up or something like that with this band. Again, they told me they're a four piece and that's all they need, but they always show it with different stuff. So I'll leave a space. Let's do electric. Uh, just in case they show up with a helix or something like that, we'll have stereo lines. So electric left, electric right. I'll have that and it's easy to make it mono if we need to or not have linked inputs. So I'm going to link these right here. That's electric left, electric right. Maybe they sh might show up with two amps, who knows? And then inputs that aren't used on inputs that aren't used, I'll make black. So I, I'm not looking at them. And then here black here black and then i got 13 14 15 16 that would be open and if i just know it's a couple of vocalists i might go ahead and squeeze them in here if they're if i really suspicious that there might be more inputs or they weren't great in communicating i'll leave this open and put vocals here but let's just say i feel good about it being a small group we communicated well let's throw in a vocal here folks and then if it's just one vocalist, I would still run a spare. So just like coiled up 58 right next to where they're going to be. So vocal one or vocal two or vocal one and vocal spare, however you want to label that. So that's that's the input channels themselves. And that leaves me the, the others if another band shows up uh, for not sharing drums or something like that. So I like to squeeze at least an X32 world into banks of eight or 16, just because that's how they want you to work. You only have a certain amount of real estate. Now let's move on to processing. It's super complicated. I just start with a high pass filter <laughs> where I need it. So snare usually start at 100 hertz and we want that to match on our overheads because that's gonna be a lot of correlated information as well. Same thing on our hats. I don't do this like roll up to 400 hertz business on my hi hats. If we need to take, take down some low end, I would use a low shelf and do that if I need it. Share that, and then Tom one, I'll usually just leave these low, then during sound check, roll them up when I need it. Again, I wanna have as much as I can done so I can just quickly grab stuff and go, because uh, moving quickly and having as much as you can already done during sound check before the band gets there, earns trust early, helps you look awesome because you're quick and fast and speed is rewarded in production. Not sloppiness, but speed with precision. Bass, leave it flat. Electric, probably a high pass filter at 80 hertz or so, unless we're doing like some ultra chuggy stuff. 80 hertz is fine because that's the low E on a guitar. Go ahead and make these channels black. Vocal one here, 160. 160. And in another video, I talk about this tilt point of 1K. So you can go to my on vocals. It's, I, you can find on my channel, it's like my vocal EQ starting point. And I'll have like a low shelf, sorry, grab the wrong thing. Low shelf, let's just look at it kind of severely. But at 500 hertz, it's kind of this tilt point below that. And then I have another high shelf, which is already set for us at uh, maybe 2K or so, right above 1K, where it's kind of this teeter totter. I usually don't start with the boost there on the high shelf, but I almost always end up taking out some low mid energy overall due to the proximity effect in the live environment so it's close so i'll start with that maybe there for my vocal eq maybe even down to minus six but high pass filter is definitely there around 160 and then just tailoring how the low mids move up into the rest of the microphone and that's it for eq i would duplicate that there so put that at 500 or so low shelf down 6 db and away we go so that's vocals Electric has that. Almost always end up cutting some mid-range there. And then these are all kosher, just high-pass filters, and then we'll move on. I might have phantom power set. I know in the hi-hat microphone, it's probably gonna be a condenser. Overhead's probably gonna be a condenser. So go to channel, have phantom power on. But if I'm not connected to the stage box ahead of time to do that, I can't remember if the that parameter transfers on an X32 console file. Uh, I would double check that. Anyway. So we're good there, have our input set up, 
Now let's talk about insert effects and then we'll move on to time-based effects. So effects one through four want to be your insert ones and that's where I have each bus 13, 14, 15, and 16 routed to. We'll come back here. Uh, I never use graphic EQ ever. <laughs> I'll just get that out of the way. I'm going to move to the drum processing and then we'll go to vocal processing. So I like the 1176 or the Ultimo compressor here. Put that in channel one, channel two, bring it in, channel three, channel four. Make that the dual Ultimo and the dual means it's, it's, it's dual mono. So it's not linked. And the settings I like is a pretty slow attack and it's backwards knob in 1176. That human who made that was not helpful. Uh, and then fast release. I want to kind of not kill the transient, but love it a little bit, then get out of the way. That's why I like for drums. So slow attack, fast release, ratio, leave it on four to one. And gain structure will determine what I do with these, but it's a fixed threshold, but either boost more into it or take some away. So every time I would bring up this up 2 dB, I would need to bring this down 2 dB to take, get the same level out. Uh, I guess different if I'm compressing the snot out of it, but I'm usually not looking. Just depends on maybe a couple of 4 dB on like big hits, nothing crazy. So same settings here. I would duplicate that over to B. So slow attack, fast release. Here is slow attack fast release and go over to the B side, slow attack, fast release. That's drums. And then overheads, I would have a compressor active. Let's, I usually leave the threshold up and then bring it down when I know I need to have it. I want a pretty fast attack on overheads, one millisecond. I don't do any hold, 100 millisecond release. And we'll do a three to one ratio is fine with me. Probably similar thing with hat. So. One, zero, 100, three to one. That's it for hat. Bass, I like the leisure compressor for bass. So dual leisure, just so if I need another channel and we'll put this one on dual leisure because I like it for vocals as well. So bass, let's patch that. So channel nine, turn on the insert, insert. And I also like it because it's two knobs. <laughs> it's really hard, so just input gain. Okay, or it might be output gain, I can't remember. Oh yeah, output gain is here. So I'll bring that down to zero. Input gain and the peak reduction. This basically raises or lowers the threshold. So zero peak reduction is really high threshold, so it's not gonna do anything. And push this. I usually start with it about 50 and gain structure is gonna determine how hard it hits. But uh, I usually am pretty liberal with the amount of bass compression in a live environment, so if they're hitting like really big hits, if it's hitting five, seven dB, that's fine. If it's just kind of like a constant one or two, if they're playing lightly, that's that's good with me. So that's the the leisure comp. It's an LA-2A copy for those keep keeping score at home. And vocal one, vocal two, and move here, channel, oh, that's all right, it's channel 15. And that's the compressor I like on vocals most of the time. If I don't like it, I'll move it over to the Ultimo or the 1176. Channel 15, 16, and leave it here. And then depending on gain structure, I might move it up to as high as like 66, as low as 40. It just depends on how they're singing. So those are the insert effects I have from the start. And just during a sound check, I will fine tune those. Now let's move to time-based effects. So this is the start, the stock, or if you initialize the console, what's gonna be here. So I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna push this to the hall this to the rich plate <laughs> and then i'm gonna have two stereo delays even with a mono rig i'll run these stereo delays they'll just get summed together and here's the settings i leave this stock except to leave the the damping i bring it down a good bit because i don't like the s's giving me this forever ring out stuff so i'll bring that down quite a bit leave that one as is and then the plate same thing with the damping but i'll make the decay time longer so this is like my big 80s drum plate and like longer intimate vocal plate so this is at a second and a half and this is at two and a half so it's kind of a shorter and longer verb and i'll play with these a little bit this is where i start this is either a slap to delay or a kind of an eighth note delay depending on the show and the gig if i'm doing rockabilly you better bet it's a slap delay so factor of one, I don't offset these between left and right on this unit. 
or this particular instance, I'll bring down the feed high cut to 1K, low cut up there, and then the high cut on the end, on the about 2K and 100, because this is mostly for vocals. So I just want to uh, band limit them a little bit so that they're here and get a real fast tap. So I'm just like duh, 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 on the iPad when I need it to get that delay time to get a slap back. That's where I set. Then here's the long delay. This is more, I, I have it going all the time, just a little bit, very low, like 20 or 30 dB down, but then I could push it um, on the last word of a phrase to kind of create this wash afterwards. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through how I do that in a second. So, so same thing, roll my low cut up, my high cut down to about 1K. And same thing with the feed high cut. And this is really program dependent. I'll play with it. But I'll add the factor on the left channel at one and the right channel at three over two. I'm going to turn up my feedback a good bit. This at 60% and this at 50% to start. Since it's a, a longer factor, I don't want it hanging out as much. So maybe even 45. And I'll just get a 58, kind of play with it in that room and talk into it. But I just want it to be this washy thing that happens after the fact. So that's there. So let's go to our buses. I can now do sends on fader from my hall. I want just vocals to that hall and I would send acoustic guitars to that hall. And then for plate, I would have vocals and then also my drums. That's where I would, and I just do my shells. And yes, I'd send kick there because something that bugs me if I hear a mix, if it's like super tight kick and then stare, kick, stare, that, that, that's weird. I want my drums to feel like they're all in the same space. And then I'll blend in my overheads as needed, but they're usually much lower than the other microphones. And let's get hi-hat in there too. But I usually want my, my close mics to be doing that. Short delay, just vocals, send that there. And this is all post fader feed, long delay. And this is fun, kind of a little trick for you, for those who are sticking around towards the end. I will have my long delay, that effects return, I want to send it into the plate verb. So this is the return of that. So I have now have my delay return, now pushing into swimming around in my plate which is cool. So it just kind of helps extend that, makes that a little bit more emotional. Uh, it's a fun thing. So I like that one. Not the short delay, just the long one. And I got those effects there. Now that I have all inputs set up and ready to go, I have my effects routed. Now let's get DCAs. So if I, I, I'm not a huge fan of DCAs in general, but we don't have custom faders or on an X32 and that kind of stuff. So let's, let's figure that out. Got it. DCAs, labeling. I'll have on the end here, I, it really just depends on how many inputs I have. But let me just, if I had to work with this show today, I'd probably leave my tunes fader on its own thing because I know where that's going to be. If I had a lot of different playback sources, I'd put those on DCA so I can quickly get to them. But mostly what I'm doing with DCAs is mixing my effects um, and having to deal transition stuff. So let's do five... All plate, all delay, Oop, S delay, short delay, L delay, and have those be purple. Then I would assign, assign them as such, but I'm not assigning the return, I'm signing the bus, the bus send into it. So hall, it's gonna go to one, oh, that's the mute group. Oh, there we go three and four. Oh, sorry, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Get rid of those. So now those buses are now attached to my DCAs and that determines how much I'm sending into uh, those units. Because if I try to do that vocal throw effect where I'm throwing a syllable into it and then bring it out, if they were on a return, I, I wouldn't have control over what went into the verb or not. I would just kill it, which isn't fun. So then I usually end up offsetting these 15 dB so that I have more resolution on my DCA so I'm not having to run them super low and try to mix on those. And that gives me more wiggle room so I'm pushing stuff up a lot closer to Unity. Sometimes that's even negative 20, 
but that's how I'm mixing there. So I'm putting hall to get the vocals in a generic verb, maybe it's acoustic guitars. The plate is for slower, washier songs. The short delay is more of a slapback that provides texture, and the long delay makes more emotional transitional moments. So that's all of that. I have, if I didn't say so earlier, my left right is being sent post fader. So I can adjust volume there. We've talked about gain structure there. Just kind of checking sure it makes it, it didn't miss anything huge. And have those MC microphones there on the end, just in case I need them. But that is the, the setup. So yeah, you can uh, get this at the link below in my audio toolkit. I'll give you this exactly as it stands, errors and all, uh, to be able to use and reference. But I hope that that was helpful to you to put together those pieces and what a console file, uh, what I'm thinking through when I'm building it on the fly. Uh, thank you so much for watching. My name is Michael Curtis. Catch you next time.